Hello students, this is Ms. Rebecca with the Reach for the Stars program at Longfellow Elementary. Welcome back to another video on literacy. And this week we are going to be starting a new book by the same author, D. Stewart. Now this book is the second volume of the Just As Kids Hello students, this is Ms. Rebecca with the Reach for the Stars program at Longfellow Elementary. Welcome back to another video of mine, and today we are going to be reading another new book by the same author, D. Stewart, but this time we will be reading the second volume of the Just As Kids series called Just As Kids Frozen. So, welcome back, and I hope you guys enjoy this new story. Materials needed. All we're going to be needing is the same notebook that hopefully if you follow along with Just Get ship ship Shipwrecked, you can use that same notebook. Just follow along to the next page and write down your essay questions there. A pencil and some good listening ears. So for today's agenda, May 28th, 2020, we are going to be reading the objective for Just As Kids Frozen, have an overview of essay questions, we're going to read chapter one, and then review the essay questions one last time. So here, as you see, I have the book cover of this new book that we're going to be reading, Just As Kids Frozen. And now we will be following along with the objective. Objective. Students will follow along with the teacher and read Just As Kids Frozen. And once the reading is done, students will participate in a few short essay questions at the end regarding the day's reading. So chapter one questions. Number one. What was Abigail so proud to have done all by herself? And what are you most proud of doing without help? Number two, what is Abigail's favorite breakfast meal? And what is your favorite thing to eat for breakfast? Number three, if you can travel anywhere, where would you go and why? And number four, what do you know about Alaska? And what would you like to learn about this cold place? Now remember, keep your notebook with all your answers to Ruth Raffle tickets when I see you again. So now let's continue on to chapter one. Chapter one. Abigail looked at the mirror and grinned. Just as usual, she plucked her satin sleep cap off her head and began to rebraid her hair. This was the first year she was able to twist her hair without her mother's help, and it made her feel grown up. Her brown eyes sparkled as she thought about her birthday. She rubbed some of her lotion across her dark brown cheeks and smiled. I can't wait to be 11, she said. She hurried down the stairs and saw her parents and grandparents near the dining room table. There's the birthday girl, said her grandfather, wagging his furry eyebrows with excitement. Her grandmother gave her a big hug, sharing her lavender perfume that would now be on Abigail's clothes all day. She adored her grandparents and their uniqueness. I made your favorite breakfast, said Abigail's mother, her sparkling amber eyes lighting up. Pancakes and sausage. Plus, tonight we will have birthday cake and ice cream for dessert, said her father, smiling his gap tooth smile at her. The stacks of pancakes were served and syrup was passed around the table, and Abigail could feel how much she was loved. I know you love to read, said Abigail's grandmother, her hands shaking as she folded them. What have you been reading lately? Adventure stories, answered Abigail happily. I like to read about other parts of the world and think what it would be like to visit there. Explorers had to know what was dangerous in different climates, what equipment to take, and how to survive. Right now, I'm reading about cold places. It's still hot here in Houston, even though it's October. Abigail's father had lost his job a couple years ago, <clears throat> and the family hadn't done any traveling since. They saved all their money, and even after he got a new job, there was, uh, they were always careful not to overspend. Reading was a way she could experience new places for free. Later that night, after a fun-filled day with her family, chocolate cake with yellow frosting and candles was brought to the table after dinner. Abigail sat in front of it and blew out the candles. 
She asked her eyes, she closed her eyes, and pictured every place she'd like to visit someday. Did you make a wish? asked her mother. A mischievous look in her eyes. It looked like she had a secret. I wished for a snowstorm, Abigail announced, waving her hand at her face like a fan. Her grandfather laughed and handed her a wrapped present. I think you're going to like this, he said, and he winked at Abigail's grandmother. Abigail carefully unwrapped the gift. I can feel that it's a book, she said. Then she read the title. Welcome to Alaska, the 49th state. Super, said Abigail. It's just what I need to know about a cool place surrounded by cool water and mountains with snow on top. Thank you. Your mother and I have another cool surprise for you, said her father, now looking like he was on a secret too. How would you like to fly to Anchorage, Alaska in March during your school break? The Idiot Rod Trail dog sled race is held the first Saturday in March. We can see all the dog sleds at the starting line. Really? asked Abigail. She was sure she'd heard them wrong. There was no way her dream would really come true. Now I really can't wait to read my book about Alaska. Wait until I tell my friends. She didn't stop reading at just the one book about her destination. By the end of November, Abigail had learned all the names of the most important, prominent historical towns in Alaska. In December, she spent m most of her school's winter break poring over Alaska maps and reading about the bodies of water, mountains, and tundra. By February, she drove her friends crazy as she shared fact after fact about Alaskan wildlife and their habitats. She was intrigued with the native people who had lived in Alaska for centuries and read all about their traditions and how they survived at the burial winters, the brutal winters. Of course, she also read about the idiot about the dogs and the mushrooms who guided them. That was going to be the most exciting part. By the time it was finally March, Abigail was an expert on all things Alaska. Preparing for the trip, Abigail and her parents packed sweaters, jackets, knitted hats, and gloves. In March, Anchorage average high temperature is 34 degrees, and the average low temperature is 19 degrees. I'm bringing a survival kit in my backpack, said Abigail, and I can't wait to wear my boots. It would feel really cold to us, Abigail's mother warned. I'm a little nervous. None of us have ever been somewhere so cold. But I know you're very prepared. You've read more than a dozen books. She'll be our guide, her father added. I know if I have any questions, I'll be asking my little girl. Thanks, Daddy, Abigail beamed proudly. All her preparing would finally come in handy. She couldn't wait. Now that's about it for chapter one. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys come back next week to read chapter two. Before we end our video today, let's go over the chapter one questions one last time. Number one, what was Abigail so proud to have done all by herself? And what are you most proud of doing without help? Number two, what is Abigail's favorite breakfast meal? And what is your favorite thing to eat for breakfast? Number three, if you could travel anywhere, where would you like to go and why? Number four, what do you know about Alaska and what would you like to learn about this cold place? Now remember, keep your notebook with all your answers to re receive raffle tickets when I see you again. Now that's about it for today. I hope you guys join us next time for chapter two of Just Us Kids Frozen. And I hope to also see you Monday through Thursday from 3 p.m. to 3.45 for homework help. And I hope to see you during our summer program starting June 9th to July 9th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll be doing fun activities over the summer and you'll be able to see um, some familiar faces such as myself and Miss Rose and a few other fun people who will be joining us for the summer. I hope to see you then. Have a great day.